Hello everyone. How are yous? Um, am I close enough for yous? Hi, it's me, Revboy. I still exist. The last few videos have not been, you know, containing this beautiful face, but I am back, it's your boy Red Boy. And you know what else is back? Premier League! It's coming tonight. It's coming literally an hour, maybe an hour and a half after I upload this video with Crystal Palace taking on Arsenal. So I thought to myself, what am I gonna do? What? <clears throat> So I thought to myself, what am I going to do? And what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to sit here and give you my Premier League Game Week 1 predictions. Simple as, I'm going to give a quick one through and give a little bit of a juice from where they are. No bias going into is purely his first game of the season. It's hard to base it off form and, you know, bits and pieces like that. So let's just crack straight into the video. Simple as. Cracking into our first game, we have Arsenal. Arsenal. The Gunners, some people call them. There's an interesting football fact for you. I bet none of you knew that was a footballing fact. And Crystal Palace. Yeah. This is going to be an Arsenal 3 nil win. I think Palace are going to struggle a bit this season. I said it in my predictions. I did say they were going down, but I. Taking that statement back for now and basically replacing with Southampton. And if you want to know what I'm on about, click that video up there. But anyway, as I was saying, yeah, I think Arsenal are going to have a good start to the season here. A lot of new signs after coming in. It will be great to see Jesus and how he's going to play in that Arteta system. And then obviously Sinchenko there in that left back. We know he can get forward. But I think this is going to be a good, strong start to the season for Arsenal. And they tend to do it every now and again. Some seasons they start really strong. Some seasons they start terribly. And on Palace's side of things, I'm not too sure. It's game week one. Don't eat me. It's not like I've got last week to go off or current form, which usually is a big decider in these results and these predictions. But going to go. For Arsenal 3, Palace 0. Up next is going to be a bit of a horrifying, horrible, horrendous, big words that mean negative things for Fulham, who were taking on Liverpool on Saturday at 12.30. And yeah, not a good start to the season for a team that's to come up to play Liverpool. That's not a good, healthy way to see. Right, lads, let's give them a game. Let's play our football. Woohoo! Follow They're not going to be able to do that at Craven Cottage, unfortunately. So for that reason, I'm going to go with Liverpool 4. Fulham won. Liverpool, not the most amazing window. It's been decent, as you can see, if you want to see that. I ranked every Premier League summer window, and obviously it's not over yet. There still could be many more signings, looking at you, Leicester. But we'll talk about Leicester later. But yeah, no, we're going to go for Liverpool 4, Fulham 1. Yeah. Up next, we have Bournemouth and Villa, and I think Bournemouth... Uh, made some alright little signings. I, I, I don't think they're going to stay up necessarily, but I think they're, they'll put in a shift and they'll definitely grab a few goals. But Villa, what a window. What a window indeed. But I'm just plain and simple. I'm going to go for Villa 2, Bournemouth 1. I think Villa will dominate the game, struggle to score a few times, you know, near chances missed, you know, while forward players are finding their feet back in the Premiership. And then I think Bournemouth might just pick up something from a corner maybe late on in the game, just to scare Villa a bit. But I think it'll be three points for the Villains and Steven Gerrard. Up next we have Leeds and Wolves. And a lot of people think Leeds are going to go down because last season they didn't do exactly fantastic. But this season, I think Leeds might shock everyone a bit. I think Leeds might do well. So well, they're going to be Wolves 3-1. You know, I just think opening start of the season, Jesse Marsh got his first, you know, season at Leeds now to, you know, tinker and play around. And he's had time to bring in his science. Um, if they are, they've been fantastic signs that Leeds have made. I'm not going to talk about the name and the transfers too much in this video just because I kind of done that last week. Up next, we have Newcastle and probably the most anticipated team to watch this season from everyone. Everyone's expecting Newcastle to do big things. They've got the money now. It's their first season with the money. I know they had it last season but they only had half a season and Eddie Howe worked wonders from January of last year since Eddie Howe came in at Newcastle if you would have started the league then Newcastle would have finished third look it up it's statistically correct I can back that all day they would have finished third if that was the case on points in, in the league if the season started then so based on that statistic and that statistic alone along with them picking up the likes of Botman uh, who I think is a quite a good signing and obviously many more signs to come in I think Nick Pope is another good signing for him Nottingham Forest also have had quite a good window in my opinion it's going to be interesting to see how their wing backs or their full backs we're still yet to know if it's going to be a four or five back for Nottingham Forest it's going to be interesting to see how they play but they've gotten some really young exciting talented players it's going to see it's just going to be they're, they're a team that I can't wait to watch this season I think Nottingham Forest have what it takes to stay up at the moment in time but I'm going to do an opening day loss and I'm going to go 3-1 I'm a bit iffy about that because I think Nottingham Forest could shock everybody with that first game but I'm going to stick to my guns 
Big Eddie Howe fan. Up next, we've got Tottenham and Southampton. I think Southampton are going down this season. And every now and again, well, once every season, Southampton tend to lose somewhere between 7-9-0 to nine at some point. This could be that game. Spurs are the scariest looking side going into the Premiership this year. What a window. What a manager. What players they already had at the club. Son, Kane, fantastic players. Lloris, quite a good goalie. Underrated to a lot of people. He's not in the top three conversation in the league, but he's really good. Basuma in midfield might not be playing this one. That's a little bit of a knock. But Perisic, scary. Richarlison, you never know. When he signs for a new club, he looks amazing and then he sort of... But I'm going to go for a 5-0 Tottenham. And yes, there's been comments every video. Day number 19, video number 5 of convincing Red Boy he's a Tottenham fan. I'd rather get my prostate checked by Mark Henry than support Tottenham. No offence, got no hate for Tottenham, but that's just what I'd rather do. Next, we've got Everton taking on Chelsea. Frank Lampard goes back to Stamford Bridge again as a manager. But he's managing in the struggling Everton side. Not a fantastic window. Lost for Charleston as well, which who who is and who was a big player for him. And I think Lampard's a very nervy manager. I don't think Lampard can do well under pressure. Lampard likes to be the underdog. That's where he's comfortable. And in this game, he is going to be the underdog. But I think going back to your old team, where you managed before, it's just going to be, yeah. And I can see Chelsea having a really good open into the season. Look at last season, how good Chelsea were at the start of the season. Sterling, going to be very interesting to see how he plays. I don't think Kukurel is over the line yet. I don't know what's going on there, but, but we'll talk about that next week. Koulibaly at the back, exciting stuff. Will Gallagher play? There's a lot of interesting questions, but I think we'll see a more together squad. No injuries at the moment either for Chelsea. Um, Rhys James available, Ben Chilwell available, who were huge factors. You have to remember, for a good for the early part of last season, Chelsea were motoring. They were first top of the league and then it just fell off with Chilwell and Rhys James going. But I think it's going to be a good day for Chelsea. I'm going to go for a cheeky little 4-1. Yeah. And just before I get into Sunday's games, as we just finished off Saturday, I'd like to thank you all for watching the video to this point so far. I will get to them predictions now in just a second. Just wait, just please, just let me talk. Please like the video, please give it a share as well if you do like it with your friends and stuff, or come back after and comment if you don't want to comment out and tell me how wrong I am after Sunday. Monday morning, come straight on, put it in your calendar, go into Google, go boom, 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 calendar entry, and you go, Red Boy doesn't know what he's talking about. Go do it, go do it, see what happens. Also as well, there's a link in that description. If you want to check that link, that'd be great, because if you do, um, you can watch me on another channel um, while they slowly push me off screen because I'm not meant to promote myself on HRTZ videos but check the link anyways it's, it's greatly appreciated. Leicester Brentford! Brentford are going to beat Leicester. It's going to be a tough season for Leicester I just think Brentford are going to do it. Some okay signings once again from Brentford doing their money balls there they do all the time but yeah 2-1 I don't know who's going to score to be honest but I just see Brentford picking up a win and making uh, Leicester do some panic decisions in terms of signings so you might get their transfer car up and running Man United, probably the team that everyone wants to watch the most. I'm not being bad, everyone's got their own team, but seeing how Man United get on on the first day, new manager, some good signings coming in as well. It's going to be interesting, and they're playing Brighton. Now, we all remember last season with Man United and Brighton, you know, old Danny Welbeck and the crew and Man United fans. But I think this is going to be a good point. If they can show now against Brighton, what they were struggling with last season and they could beat them, which I think they will, 2-1. I think it'll be a good start for Ten Hag. I don't think they're going to come out and go insane. I don't think it's going to be mad. Players are going to need time to get used to the new Ten Hag system, the new Ten Hag style. I think Man United are going to think they're going to win this one, 2-1. But yeah, sorry Brighton fans, sorry Grandpa, I love you so much. Please be England manager, please. And our last game, our last one. Very sad, <laughs> crying. <laughs> It is West Ham taking on Man City. I think Man City are going to struggle. Tough opening game to the season and West, they dropped points the rest of last season. West Ham, David Moyes, he likes playing against the big teams. He likes playing against the top six. He likes playing against Manchester City. I think it's going to be 1-1. Sorry about these predictions. They're very hard to do game by game when you haven't watched anything. You're, you're only going off like a couple of transfers and I'm not being bad. I don't take pre-season into it. Man City, I guess, are just after coming off a, a, a loss to, to Liverpool. You know, quite an embarrassing loss as well especially for Haaland. So, yeah. But just like he just hit the post there, 
I'm going to ask you to hit the link in the description and go subscribe to Revboy. It will look, it's also there. Also as well, please do like this video. Make sure you subscribe to HRTC Football. And while you're at it, leave a comment. Let me know your predictions down in the comment section below. But it has been your host, Revboy. Link in description. If you subscribe to Revboy, I'll um, make you your favorite dinner. But that's the end of the video. As I was saying, do all that good stuff and make sure you do like, subscribe and comment. It's been your host, Revboy. Bye.